So along with all those herbs that I'm washing and um, I have the freeze dryer. I also can dry in the oven on a metal bowl and the herbs um, dry in the oven on the metal bowl pretty quickly. Um, I have a gas stove so in the oven without even turning it on the herbs like dill they're very thin they dry pretty quickly pretty easily but I also got this house wiser herb drying rack free bonus inside is this clipper and this is the eight layers drying rack and let me open it up to show you so when you open it up they've got this from seed to abundance a thank you note from House Wiser. Little clipper, pruner. So that's good for herbs. And that's pretty thoughtful because you have to harvest your herbs in order to dry them in the drying rack. So this is the drying rack. And let me open it up. So you can see, so release the rack with nothing, place it on the floor one arm length away so that when it pops open it doesn't hit you in the face. In an open area so you don't hit anything or bump anything, grasp the rack firmly while removing the strap. So it kind of opens and closes the way that if you have a foldable uh, car window visor that's what it does so it it kind of folds up that way and then it pops open this is pretty sweet so not only do they package it in plastic but they have this um, little carrying case that has a zipper so you can open and close and put away your um, your dryer your drying rack when it's not in use. So let me open it up so it doesn't gather dust, which is quite important when you're dealing with food items. So it zips along the bottom. I was trying to open it up top the other way, but it zips open on the bottom. Then you pull out the... Oh, I can't do this one headed. Let's try to grab it. So now it has... See the hook? The S hook? So you can hang it onto a tree or onto the side of your building to dry your items. So it says be careful because it's gonna it's gonna pop open. So let me let me do that. Let me just open it up. So it says eight layers, heavy duty zippers, large ring area, breathable mesh. And that's exactly what you want in order to dry your herbs. And it says, dry herbs effectively, protect herbs from bites, easily accessible, water resistant cover. So, um, if you don't have a dehydrator or a freeze dryer, you can use this. And it even has Velcro at the top so you can open it and close it when it's already hanging on the S-hook. Um, so it's quite large. So here is the span of my from my elbow from the edge of the apparatus to the center and then you still got another um, half an arm's length. So <laughs> I don't know what you call that like diameter. Um, I'm not sure it doesn't say. Designed in the US um, reduce risk of injury. Please open the rack an arm's length away from you. Opening instructions, um, unbox, unzip, and unwrap. So it's quite easy. So when I, when I pick it up, it expands out. So, oh yes, it's quite tall. It is, wow, it's taller than my arm's length. So I can't even, if I, I, um, with my hand holding the strap, I can't really set it up high to its full length.
So this over easy chicken coop has a patent pending and it's the number two plastic so it's safe and there's their number if you're interested. Really, really cute. So we're, we went on a family trip and we need to be able to uh, feed chickens 18 chickens water for a week and a half. So um, this is the over easy, I don't know if you can see it, over easy chicken coop. And basically it's a big barrel that you just take the lid off and it holds 12 gallons of water and it looks like a little chicken coop. And it has three watering stations, drinking stations. And we'll have that as well as other vessels to feed the chickens food and water just so that they have plenty and they won't fight each other because right now we have them in three different stages. We have the mature hens, three of them. Then we have 11 pullets and then we have four uh, cuckoo morans that are little chicks that are about six weeks old I believe. So um, six or seven weeks. And the pullets are um, about 12 or 13 weeks. And those are the black Australorps. So we got to feed them all water. And this will keep it clean because it's got a cover. And it's fully enclosed. And we'll set it on top of some cinder blocks so they can't kick anything up on it and um, that way we can have lots of that way we can have lots of water for them that's clean and then in the summertime we'll buy like a bag of ice toss it in there and then fill it the rest of the way with water so they'll have nice cold water to drink all summer long And over here is an Asian green, it's called Kang Kong um, in, in Chinese, or it's called Ong Choi. Hi friends, so this is Kang Kong. I bought the original vegetable from the Asian supermarket and I made the same salad that I'm making today. So then after that, I take the very tough pieces that are at the bottom, about like four inches of it, and I just stick it in water and then it'll root 
and then I stick the cuttings into the dirt and then it made me more ong choy, more Kang Kong and it's basically an Asian water spinach so um, I'm boiling water right now and once the water comes to boil you stick the tough parts in and cook it for about two minutes or so then you add this, the leafy parts and then you uh, blanch it real quick and then you drain them and then you stick it into this dressing which is garlic, chili peppers, oil, a tiny bit of fish sauce and some bean curd paste and it comes out excellent and you could do a squirt of lemon or lime on to, um, and mix it up so it's kind of like a vinaigrette or salad dressing really really good so from the stalks that I harvested from my garden from the ong choy that I grew from the supermarket um, I cut I removed the tough parts again and now I am watering putting it into a cup of water to root and then you could perpetually have more and more ong choy of course it's only a warm season crop so by the end of fall I expect that this will be gone but I could do this earlier next year I did this starting in May so um, if I had started it back in March or April I would have had at least one or two more batches of this and all for the price of like two something for the bunch and I could just make myself more vegetables so I have the stock spoiling now I'm gonna add the leafy parts now I've added the leafy bits in. I'm going to take the colander out and I'm going to drain this. After the vegetables quite drained, well drained, then I'll stir it into this this vinaigrette and mix it up and it's ready to eat. Hi friends. So I dug up the seeds because I grew this particular cucumber, Richmond Green Apple and it looks so adorable in that little girl's hands and here I grew I have three that I harvested just now and I washed the biggest one the other ones are not too far behind but I did recall it not getting too huge so in that child's hand I believe it's about this size as the full size so it kind of fits into the palm of my hand and it looks like the right size so I'm gonna bite into it and see what it tastes like Mmm. Mm-hmm. It's round so you can eat it like an apple. I love it. So yeah, you have to harvest frequently to maintain production, and it is quite productive. And um, I harvested three because this morning when I was watering, I saw a couple of them. So I figured, okay, it's time, and I wanted to try it out. And then that way, um, hopefully it'll set more fruit because it does have a lot of flowers on the plant. I'll show you um, tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's too hot right now to be outside. Hi friends, I have a hot mess of tomato plants here. However, several weeks ago I discovered this. And it was green for the longest time. Now I'm going to harvest them. They're humongous. Let me get my scissors. As you can see, there's one more green one, so I'll leave that one there. Here they are nice big ones this is the biggest one it's bigger than my palm of my hand and i didn't know that one was so red so they took forever to green i mean to turn red and then when um i saw it yesterday it was 
barely blushing and then within a day it turned quite red but it still needs to go a little bit longer for these three. Then I have some cherry tomatoes and other things in here so let me go grab them and some cucumbers. There are a couple more red ones so I gotta get way in there to get them. So here are a couple more. Guys, it's like a treasure hunt. Once you find something, it's so satisfying. Look at that big one. A couple little ones. But we still need to at least get to blushing. And I was digging around and I found this variety of cucumber that I grew. It's round. It's from Australia. I'm just twisting it. And there it is. It's a cucumber. It's an Australian variety called green apple. And um, it's good for fresh eating. I've had several already. Oh, I found another red one. Tomato. Um, I'm just going to harvest it. So this is a um, indigo rose. So there's a purple one right there. And it's starting to blush, so I'll grab that one too. You guys have to grab it before nature grabs it. Here's another one, but I'm going to give it another day. Here are some tomatoes that are blushing, so I'll grab those. Here's another cucumber. Let me give it another day. And this one's ready. I'm twisting it. It's nice and crunchy and, and really good for snacking for kids in their hands. There it is. This is one of the first cucumbers in the front bed to produce. So I had one early in the season, then I had another one that didn't look so hot because the vine borers got into the leaves as well as the fruit. Oh, here's a little baby one. I'll just let that grow. Another couple of babies. I was just looking here from time to time. See if there's anything. Found one. There's a lot of flowers and little baby cukes. Got it. This one's okay. I guess I shouldn't have been worried. I could have just peeled the, the second cucumber that had the vine boring thing creature. Here's another one, but too tiny. So I'll just let it grow and then I'll look every other day or something. So those are the big tomatoes and some cucumbers I harvested today. And these are from my other bed of little ones. Friends, so this is this is what became of the cherry tomatoes that were growing like crazy in the earlier to mid part of summer. We gave so many, so many bags away to my mom, to my sister, to friends and family, and then we had so many that we cooked over and over again. So we ended up uh, freeze drying them and you think what can you do with them when they're freeze dried well they'll have a shelf life of up to 25 years but we're not going to wait that long but we can extend our, our eating of these 
produce that we couldn't handle the amount that we grew. Um, so you could throw it in pasta that you make later on. You can also throw it into some kind of stew. Um, if you make a sour soup, like tom yum soup, you can put it in that. So it's quite useful. Um, any anything where you need tomatoes because it'll reconstitute itself. And also, don't forget, you can just eat it as it is, freeze dried, slightly salted, and it would be just a good snack. So there we have it. Preserved food that can last you a lot longer.